In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some more must-have CNC accessories, including a square, a cam lock, a wedge, a handy sander, and a nice new shop sign. So here at Vectric, we like to use our spoil boards for what they were meant to be. Um, to save the gantry of your machine. And in this case, this old spoil board for this ooze nest, I made the mistake and I actually did plunge into it quite deep. Now, as you know, the spoil board has threaded inserts in it. We've talked about this before. Um, and I came pretty close to hitting those. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to replace this with a better version. So what we have over here is a new spoil board, thicker MDF, the same threaded inserts, but if I happen to go in a little bit deep by mistake, I'm not going to hit the tops of those inserts. So that's perfect. Now, with this nice new spoil board, I think it's a great time to come up with some new CNC accessories to help with our CNC journey. Last time around, if you remember, we made these nice little hold downs. Well, let's build on this idea of being able to hold our material in place while we're cutting it. So. What I'll do is we're going to start off by me maybe sketching out a little bit of a, a drawing so you can get a sense of what we're going to come up with and then we'll go into the software and we can go ahead and get that ready to cut. So the first thing I think we're going to make is going to be a right angle, something that's going to help us to locate our material in the same spot every time and keep everything nice and true. So really what that's going to be is a couple of rectangles with rounded ends just for sort of a design feature, I guess maybe. Make sure that we fill it inside the corner here so when we put our material in there, it's gonna fit nice and tight in there without any problems. Then we need a couple channels in there as well, which would be quite easy to make. That way we can actually um, bolt this down into our threaded inserts to keep it nice and sturdy. And then we go ahead and slide in our material, see how that fillet works. It'll let that corner slide right in there nice and tight. And every time, if I got that secured down nice and tight, it should always allow me to locate that material in the same spot every time. Now that I have that drawn out, let's go ahead and jump into the software and we can decide how we're gonna model it in there. Okay, you'll see that we have Cut 2D open here. Now, um, this project is prime for Cut 2D because we're just gonna be using some profile cuts, so it, it, you don't need anything special for that. Um, and as you'll see that this file I'm going to start working in actually has the vectors that I used to cut the brand new spoil board that's on the machine right now. Um, I thought this would be great because I can go ahead and reference the uh, actual um, threaded insert holes that I had actually cut into that board and I can see all the little bits and pieces around there so maybe I there, there might be the chance that I might need to avoid certain things um, or might want to take into account some things um, so it's always good to have that for reference now I suspect that your spoil board is probably a bit different so keep that in mind that this is all of this project is based on my spoil board um, so you might need to make some changes to make it work for you under our layers manager up here you'll see that I have one layer called spoil board and it's currently colored gray and it's locked now it's locked so that way I won't accidentally go ahead and select any of these circles or squares and move them by mistake and now to if you ever want to lock a layer all you need to do is just right click on that layer and you can go down to it would say lock here if it was unlocked the fact that mine is locked it's going to give me the option to unlock it so i can go ahead and unlock that if i'd like when i drop this back down again you'll see the little lock is missing so now i can go ahead and select things on that layer or create new vectors or content on that layer i don't want to do that so we're going to right click on that and we're going to lock that and then I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new layer and we're going to call this layer square. And I'm going to color it green just so I can see a little bit better. And then we're going to click anywhere into our job space. Now again, I've got my spoil board here so that I can go ahead and reference everything I need to. Uh, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create one arm of our square and then we're going to use that one arm to create the full square. Now really there's no magic here. I just need to make sure that the channel in the middle of the square where I'm going to put my bolt in is uh, the same size if not bigger than the threaded part of my bolt that I'm going to use or the screw that I'm going to use and in my case that's about the same size as these holes are here that I use to uh, 
put my threaded inserts into. Um, and really, I just don't want to use up too much of my spoil board if I can for these. I want them to be sturdy, but they don't need to be super big. So let's go ahead and select our rectangle tool. And we're simply just going to go ahead and draw in a rectangle. We need to make sure that we include in this corner um, hole here. That way we can use it as reference to rotate this one arm around uh, 90 degrees. So we're just going to go ahead and draw a rectangle, something like maybe that long. I want this to be a smaller one. And I'll show you how to make a bigger one from this once we're all done. I think that looks pretty good right there. Okay, we're just going to go ahead and close that down. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy that. So control C, control V. And we're just going to simply go ahead and hold down my shift key. And we're just going to drag those in. Make sure that that's the right size there for the channel. Give us a little space there. And then we're going to give us some space there like that. So really, what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this is I want to make sure that I encompass or I, I leave myself enough room so I can have at least one um, bolt in each arm or one screw in each arm. Um, and that way it'll make it nice and stable. That way it won't move around on me. I do need to make sure that everything is centered up here nice and easily. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and hold down my shift key here, grab both of those. And I'm just going to drag it down until the center is on that middle line. Now, like I mentioned to you before, I want to make sure that this is just about the same size as that hole is there. Maybe a little bit bigger. That way, it's a little wiggle room. That looks great. I don't particularly like these sharp um, corners here. So let's go ahead into our fillet tool here. We're going to fillet this guy here. Um, uh, 0.635 of a millimeter. Now that's the size of the uh, the cutter that I want to use, my quarter inch end mill. So that way it'll make it kind of nice in the end. That's great. And I'm uh, going to leave those there for right now. We'll come and crack those in a second. Then we're going to close this down. I want to make sure that the ends of these are round. And the easiest way to do that is to go into node mode with that rectangle selected. Hover over these ends, right click on that, and we're going to turn that into an arc. Right click on this and we'll turn this one into an arc. That looks pretty good. It's great. Now we're going to go ahead and rotate this up uh, the 90 degrees that we need. So we're going to hold our shift key down. Go ahead and grab that one there as well. Click again. Then we're going to go ahead and drag this, uh, our rotation point, right to the middle of that circle. And then when we hold down our Alt key as we rotate this around, you'll see that indexes. Um, for me and locks it into place where I want it to be. That looks really good. Oh, I didn't hold down my control key while I did that. So it didn't make a copy. So let's do that again. Over here. And now what I can do is take these two here, these two rectangles. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that they, they, they meet up at the in the corner here properly. I don't really like this little bit of a jog here. So let's go into node mode. And we're just going to uh, grab those two nodes. Just pop those down so that they they line up properly onto that. And then what we can do is with those two rectangles selected, we can weld those together to make one shape. And there we have it. Now it looks pretty good as the right angle that we need or the square that we need, but I'm not incredibly happy with this outside radius here. So let's just go ahead and we are going to use the fillet tool again. And we're going to radius that. I'll zoom in a bit. There we are. Zoom back out again. And we're going to have a problem right here with, with what's going on. When we actually cut this with our CNC machine, this will actually be a fillet. So it's going to be radius out like this because our tools are round. And that's going to mean that when I go to put in a, a piece of material with a, a square corner, it's not going to be able to run up against these two uh, arms here. So I need to do something here. So there's a couple of different ways I can do that. I could easily just go in and create a uh, dog bone fillet and I can just go ahead and click that. And that would work perfect. And I'll show you why it would work perfect. Because if I go ahead and draw a square, let's pretend this is my material, I can just drag this in. And you'll see that now these two edges touch the side walls here. And I've got a spot to put my little corner here, this corner. The reason why I don't particularly like this is because if there's any variance in my or variation in my cutter width, I may not get, see there's no clearance here at all. Um, so I might not get that exact cut that I want. So let's, let's just go ahead and move this out of the way for a second. 
Actually, let's just go undo a bunch of steps there. Maybe we can get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle right here. That's going to be the diameter of my actual tool, which is 0.635. So I got that already typed in here. And I can click just on this little corner, and you'll see that'll draw that circle right there. So let's close that down. And now what I'm going to do is select this outside shape that I have here this of my arm or my square. Hold down my shift key. I'll grab that circle. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract the circle from the shape that I have, this right angle. That looks really nice. Um, the only problem with this is that I can't actually get my tool inside of here right now because of the way that these, these sharp points are. So let's go back into our fillet tool and we're going to go ahead and fillet this half of the diameter or the, or, or the radius of my tool. So I'm going to do some maths here. I'm going to divide this by two and press equals right in this field. And then I can go ahead and click there. If I zoom in a bit. Oh, I need a normal fillet, sorry. We're going to go ahead and click there and there. And you see now I've got this sort of interesting new shape. Now if I go ahead and draw that square or that rectangle that I had and I close this down and we tuck that in there, you'll see that I've got all kinds of clearance now. So any variation that I have is not going to be a big deal. I can get a nice sharp uh, piece of material in there that has a nice 90 uh, degree uh, corner on it like that perfectly in there. Okay, so now that is pretty decent for a small square. Now, in some cases, we're going to want one that's a little bit bigger. So how can we go ahead and take this design and create a larger one from it? Well, that's pretty easy to do. But the first thing I want to do is I want to create a bit of a reference here for this, uh, this corner here. So I'm going to grab a circle, my circle tool. I'm just going to grab a circle and just draw a circle in there that's the same size as my um, the hole that I used to create my the holes of the threaded inserts. So we're going to grab all those, click it. Then we're going to go ahead and drag it. And I'm going to hold down my control key to copy it. And it will just snap to that circle there. I'll let go of that. And there we have it. So now for a larger one, I think what I'd like to do is to make it so that I can get at least two bolt holes inside of this channel. That way it gives me a little bit more versatility if I would like to. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my shift key and grab both these shapes. Now if I go into node mode, you'll see that I will get access to all of the nodes in both of those shapes. Okay, which is really kind of handy. I can go ahead and select all of these. And then I can just hold down, uh, I can just start to drag it out, hold down my Alt key. And I can drag those along until I make sure that I have that other bolt hole with inside that channel. And that's all I need to do. That works really well. So now that's long enough now that I should be able to get, use this bolt hole if I want, or this bolt hole, or use both of them if I need to. You just never know. So let's go ahead and do the same for up here. Let's go back to our pick tool. I'm going to hold down my shift key. We're going to grab this one here, that other shape, the channel. Go into node mode, select all of those. We're going to go ahead and start to move it and hold down our alt key. That will lock it into um, the right axis for me. I can let go of that and I can go back to my select tool, delete this guy out of there because we don't need that little fella right there. We don't need this one anymore. And now we have two um, squares that will be perfect. Now, to cut these, let me go ahead and open up the file that we're going to give you with this project so you can see the really super basic tooling that we're going to need to cut these out. Okay, so here we have it. This is the file that you're going to receive with uh, this project. And you'll see that I've moved off the two um, squares off, the, off my job space, but there's the spoil board that we saw a second ago. And I've created this second sheet over here. Now, this is the same size as the material that I'm going to use to cut this project in. So if I just go ahead and double click on that sheet. You see they've arranged them in a nice way so they make the best use of the space. If I bring up my tool paths, pin that down. We have one tool path. That's all we need for this job. We're going to go ahead and just double click on that. You see it's a very basic profile tool path. We're going to go down the, um, the thickness of our material plus a little bit more, which is going to make sure that we cut through our material. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to cut outside those lines. And then we're going to make sure that we add in some tabs. We don't want these to fly out of there. Now, one of the things that I want to point out to you about these tabs is I never put a tab on the inside of these 
a squares or right angles. That way I'm ensured that these surfaces are going to be flat and true to my machine. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now I do want to point out one more thing about this form is that I've gone ahead and I've hidden my um, advanced toolpath options so I can show those and I can hide those again. Just wanted to show you that so that if you happen to have some extra options that I'm not going to get into right now, that's because you've got your advanced toolpath options showing. Okay, let's just go ahead and calculate that. It's going to warn me that we're going to cut through our material. I'm okay with that. And let's preview our visible toolpaths. And there we have it. Those are going to be perfect, I think. Okay, that was super simple to draw. You have to admit, that was pretty easy to do. So all we need now is a piece of material. And over here, we've got some old plywood. So I'm a big fan of repurposing old stuff. This looks like it was part of a box at some point. So we're going to use this to make our right angle with. Now, the great thing about this is if I happen to run into it or hurt it any, I can always make new ones. This stuff is all over the place. We've got tons of it around, so, so that's great. So I'm just going to secure this down to the CNC, and we'll get cutting. Okay, there we go, I got those all sanded down now. I made sure I removed the tabs extra well because I want those nice flat surfaces there. Let's go try them on the CNC machine. Okay, there we go, that's great. So now what we can do is we can just go ahead and simply just go ahead and index our material like that. And also, what's also nice about these two is I can turn them around and actually use them this way to go ahead and hold that in position if I want to as well. Now I think there's one extra thing that would make this set up a little bit better is one of those little cam locks. You know, they look sort of like an, an apostrophe that we can put in there to hold our material in place. How do we go ahead back to our computer and design one of those up? So here's the file that we use to design the um, right angles or the uh, CNC squares that we can use to attach to the top of our spoil board to make sure that we can always put our material back in the same reference spot, or at least that's what I would use them for most of the time. Now this is great, and in my uh, in my job here, I've got one of the or the short um, square and also a rectangle that we're going to pretend is a piece of material. Now there's a hold down or a hold that we can make that will apply pressure left or right or to the side, to the edge of your material opposed to like a, an actual hold down where you're actually applying pressure to the top of your material. Now one thing that's nice about this sort of a hold is that um, they're not really proud of your material generally, so you get a little bit more clearance across the top. Um, they're nice because they're easy, they're easy to kind of loosen, pop your material out, pop another piece on that's the same size if you're doing production stuff. These are great for that. Um, but one thing they don't do is they don't apply any, any downwards force on your material. So if your material happens to be bowed, then these aren't probably going to be the best solution for you, or at least these alone won't be. Maybe these with a, a traditional sort of hold down will do the job. So let's have a look at how we can design one of these uh, cam holds. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just, just reference one of these um, holes that I used for my threaded insert. So let's just go ahead and draw a circle. That's just about the right size as that uh, that hole or that hole is for that threaded insert. So we've got that nice circle. If we hold down our control and our shift key, we can go ahead and we can size it up. So it touches the side of that block. Now what's nice about that, of course, if we just had this and we always had the same size piece of material, then this actually might work really well. We could just go ahead and pop in our material, bolt this down with a, with a, with a bolt and a washer, and it might uh, provide enough force to the edge of your board so that it wouldn't slide around. But to ensure that that's going to happen, what we're going to do is we're actually going to offset this uh, bolt hole 
um, in the center or out of the center of this outside circle. So with this circle selected, I'm just going to go ahead and use my cursor keys and I'm going to go ahead and nudge it over a little bit. And maybe somewhere's around there. And now let's have a look at this. So if I go ahead and I hold down my shift key and I grab the that smaller circle and I click the center and I move my rotation point to the center of that circle. Then when I go ahead and grab this outside circle, you'll see what happens is it gets close to my board and then Let's just say I go ahead and add a little extra force to tighten it on there, then tighten down the bolt in the middle and let go. I can go ahead and accommodate all kinds of different pieces or sizes of wood. So just go ahead and undo that for a second. Now, another thing that's kind of nice, it'd be hard for your fingers to actually grab that and turn it around. So let's go ahead and add a quick handle to this. So to do that, we're going to go up to our draw a polyline tool. We're quickly going to go ahead and just draw a, a line like so. Uh, looks pretty decent and we're going to put it in there somewhere so we'll go ahead and press tab on our keyboard to finish that off close this down and then we're going to go ahead and select that go into node mode that's n on your keyboard we'll grab all of those nodes and then we're going to go ahead and press b on your keyboard to turn those into beziers if you forget that you can just hover over any of these lines and right click and there are your quick keys right there and there's bezier so we'll just click that actually we want to click all of those and then press B on our keyboard, and that'll turn them all into beziers. Now I can go ahead and just kind of tangent that off of there a little bit. Maybe give it a shape. The shape of this really is up to you how you want to shape it and how long the handle is. It's totally up to you. Uh, that looks pretty decent, I think. I want to round the end of this a little bit, so let's go back to our fillet tool, and we're just going to go ahead and fillet that. That looks good. Let's close that down. Let's go ahead and hold down our shift key, and we're going to grab these two vectors are those two closed vectors and we're going to weld those together and there we have a nice little cam so if we go ahead again let's just test it again to make sure it's going to work and if we grab a hold of right around here let's just say this end and we twist it around then you'll see that we can actually lock that into place putting some sideways force on that to hold it against this um, right angle or our square and maybe we need to add another one up top to kind of force it down now with this size of material this um this version of our square probably isn't the right choice we're probably going to want to use a longer one if we want to that way we get a little bit more sort of um, support on these sides but anyway i think we're off to a pretty good start now let's go ahead and have a look at the finished file for this so we can take a look at the one simple tool path we need to cut these out Okay, so here we have it, and we've got my little cam that I've drawn here. Slightly different shape, but this is the same idea. And I've gone ahead and created a sheet over here called cam. And I've given myself four uh, small ones and four larger ones. I wasn't quite sure what size was going to be the best for for my particular for my particular jobs. And I thought that this might help too if if I had a slightly longer piece, then the smaller one might might be a better option. If my piece was a bit shorter, my material is a bit shorter, then I could go ahead and I could use one of these. Um, it seemed like a good idea at the time. So let's go ahead and have a look at our tooling for this. And again, it's a very simple one toolpath wonder. We're going to hide our advanced toolpath options because we don't need those. And uh, it's, a, it's a simple profile cut. It's the same tool that we use to uh, make our squares and so we're going to start at zero we're going to cut down the thickness of our material that's the z plus a little bit deeper um, which would be good we're going to go outside our lines again we've added in some tabs and really there was no particular spot to add these tabs just somewhere where it easy it was easy to sand them off i didn't mind too much and we can go ahead and calculate that again we're going to be warned that we're going to cut through our material and let's preview um, that tool path there we go, but that seems to be a little bit too easy. One toolpath to make something that's really quite functional. Let's go see how they do. We've got that all designed up. It looks really good. It's only one toolpath. So we've got a piece of material that we're going to use. It's a lot like the last piece we just did used, so that's great. Grab that. And we'll go ahead and replace this piece of material that I have here off the machine. We can slide that in place. And then we'll just clamp it down using our regular clamps for right now. And uh, then we can start up that toolpath.
Okay, so we got all the sanded down. We got two different sizes. So let's go give them a shot over on the machine. Okay, so we're gonna use the bigger one. So the idea is that I can push this into my square like that. And then I can go ahead and quickly use this cam with a screw into the threaded insert here. And then I'll be able to twist it around and lock it in place. But you'll see, they don't always fit. So I think I need one more thing to make these really truly work. And that's gonna be a wedge to put in between my cam and the material to lock it in place. So let's go quickly do that in the software. It's really simple to do. A couple of little things and we'll have a tool path and ready to go. Okay, so now we're back to our design file, if we want to call it that. And we've got our, um, our right angle or our square. We've got, again, that piece of, or the rectangle that represents the material that we may or may not be cutting. And then we have our cam. Now, one thing that's different about this rectangle than the last time we saw it is I've made it a little bit shorter. That way we can illustrate this next sort of part of the puzzle, which is what happens if we go ahead and try to use our cam, but it can't quite hit our material. What are we going to do? Well, that's when a little wedge will come in handy. And the wedge is exactly that. It's a really simple little wedge of material that we can jam in between our cam and our material uh, to give us that or to, to, to close that gap that we need. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangle somewhere's around like that. And our rectangle is going to approximately be the full distance between the cam and the block. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and modify this to look more like a wedge. So we're going to go into node mode and we're going to grab this node right here. And we're going to bring it to the halfway point of that line. And I think that that's going to work out okay. Now that's a really basic wedge. All I really need to do now is just kind of make it look a little bit nicer, um, you know, so that I can, I'm a little happier with the way they look, just in case, you know, maybe I might want to make these out of hardwood at some time. So they should look like a nice tool in my shop. So let's go ahead and use the old fillet tool here again. Let's just go ahead and fillet the end here. Oh, that's not quite enough. So we can go ahead and undo that fillet. And we're just going to multiply this by two times two. Again, we can do math right inside of any of the fields in our software and just press equals. So we can just go ahead now and round that over. We're going to leave that one flat. And then we're going to go ahead and round this guy over like that. And that looks pretty decent, I think. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo those two again. And I'm actually going to make them a little bit more round. I'm going to double that. Again, I want them to be nice and curved. That's better. That's a little bit better there too, I think, in the end. I'm pretty happy with that. And that's it. That's all we need for a really basic wedge. Now, what's nice about this, again, is that I can go ahead and let's say I needed to double these up. This Maybe this doesn't quite reach, still doesn't quite reach. Okay, for whatever reason, I still can't quite get it to, to reach. What I can do is I can take this wedge and I can copy it. So I'm holding down my control key and dragging, press V on my keyboard to flip it over, press H again to flip it horizontally. And now I can go ahead and double these up. So now I can go ahead and create a wedge that's even wider in the end if I just put two in there instead, which may come in really handy if I have an extra wide gap I need to work with, or who knows what, what I might need two of them for. But I think that's going to work out okay. So again, let's go ahead and take a look at the file with the one that we're actually going to cut. And you'll see here we have off the side again, I've copied over my wedges. These are a little bit smaller, a little bit slightly different shape than what you just saw me make. But it's exactly the same uh, process. Uh, draw a rectangle, move the end node, fiddle it get the shape you want, and off you go. And then I've gone ahead and added a sheet in here for wedges. And there we have our wedges over here. Now I made quite a few of them here. You probably don't need this many wedges. I was just filling up my, my job. Um, you might only need six or eight maybe at the most, but you never know if you've got more than one machine or you've got a very complicated hold down, then these might come in handy. So let's go ahead and take a look at our toolpath tab again. Again, it's a one toolpath wonder. We can double click on that. 
Same as before, we're going to hide our advanced toolpath options, but we've got a start depth of zero. We're going to go down our material thickness plus a little bit. We're going to use that same tool as we did before, which is great. Outside, we added in some tabs. Now, in this case, I, I wasn't particularly, because I didn't have really anywhere smart to put these tabs, I could have put one at the end, but I didn't think that was going to hold it in place. So I did have to put one on these flat edges. So I'm just going to be really careful when I sand these down. I don't gouge my edge. Um, or I don't leave a little lump behind. So, I'm, And if I do, I want to make sure it's very, very minimal. And if anything, I want it to be more of a recess. That way I don't have a, an unflat surface to put two wedges up against or this side against my material. I want to make sure that it's as flat as I possibly can. So we can just go ahead and calculate that. Again, it's going to cut through our material. Let's preview those visible tool paths. And yeah, there we have it. Again, another really simple, quick job. And let's go ahead and get that going. Okay, so there we have it. We can uh, get that all ready to go. And then I got this piece of material here. So let's go ahead and get it on the CNC machine. And then we can cut out those wedges really fast. Okay, those seem to work out pretty good. So I think what we're gonna do now is, if you remember last time we did the CNC accessories, we made this handy little sanding block. It's round, it's nice, but I think that we can come up with a different version so we can get into some really tight corners and do some different size flat areas. So let's go ahead and design that in our software and use these brand new cam locks and wedges and see if, how, how well they work. So yeah, so I think it's gonna be, this is gonna be a two-part thing. We're gonna make a bottom that looks like the top of a, of a, a boat and the bottom looks like a part of, part of a boat and we're gonna stick them together. And on the top, we're gonna to add a block that we're gonna bolt into the base. And what that will do is it'll allow us to loosen up the top and put some sanding paper in between it and then clamp back down on the top. Okay, now that I've got a good idea of what I wanna do, let's go ahead and take those ideas and bring them in the software and design up the actual sanding block that we're gonna make. I think it'd be nice if we come up with another sanding rig, um, a lot like the palm sander that came in our first CNC Essentials projects uh, that we did earlier last year, back in 2023, um, but could do some things that that one can't. Obviously, the palm sander is great for big, large, flat areas um, or big, round areas, but in uh, it does fall short when you're trying to get into tight spots. Um, or you want to just do like a little bit of edge work, some nice tight edge work. So I think a, a, a design like this will work better. Now, this is kind of, if you took the actual sanding wedge that uh, we're going to make and actually cut it down through the center, this is what it would look like, uh, sort of cut down the center. So um, this is how I design things in our software, as I kind of think of them um, as sort of two-dimensional things, but cut down the middle or on whichever axis I need to, need to build them from. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, first of all, we're going to need to have a couple uh, hex bolts. We're going to need to make ourselves a bit of a, uh, a plug. And so the idea is that we can actually take a piece of sandpaper, a rectangular piece of sandpaper, wrap it under this side of the plug, around the outside of this, and up the other side and back underneath again. And when you put the bolts through this actual uh, plug, then it'll end up um, tightening into these nuts at the bottom, and it will secure it in place so we can use it. Now, that might not make a whole lot of sense right now, but in the end, you'll see what we're getting at. Now, I want this to be only a one-sided job. So to do that, we're going to need to actually cut this into two pieces. And this bottom bit, we're going to cut from the top side. So we're just going to go ahead and turn it over like this. And we're going to cut two pockets in it so that we can put into those pockets the nuts that we need. So again, if we go ahead and just turn this all over again, and we put it back together again, we can put the nuts in the bottom. We can glue the top to the base. And then we can go ahead and put in the paper and then we can put the plug in place and then we can go ahead and 
screw these hex bolts into place so that it will actually hold everything all together. Now we can actually glue the top and bottom together and uh, that'll make life a whole lot easier in the end. Now the real trick to do this is going to be that we're going to be using cut 2D. So we can't use V carving and we can't create any 3D content. We can't use the molding toolpath. So how exactly are we going to go ahead and cut these angles that we have here? Well, We'll get to that in a little bit, but first of all, let's go ahead and have a look at all the parts um, and all the tooling that we're gonna do with the exception of how we're gonna deal with this. So let's just go ahead and grab all of this and we're gonna move it down to the bottom of our job. We'll leave it there for now. Now, if we go ahead and look at our layers, we can go ahead and show um, our top and bottom. So if we're looking now as a sort of a bird's eye view down on the top of our design, this is the bottom. Okay, we have this bottom rectangle, and then we have the two spots that we're going to go ahead and cut in for our nuts. The way these are designed is that the distance between here and there, uh, the top and the bottom of these cavities, are is the distance between the two flat spots on a nut. That way it'll lock it in place and it won't turn. Top and the bottom are the same size. We'll use these also as our profile cuts. And this is the outside edge of our plug that fits in the top. That's this part right here. Now we're going to need to cut two pockets. So this vector here will be for the pocket that's here in this piece. Okay. And then this pocket here, we're going to be using so we can thin our material down. So we have a piece that's um, thin enough to fit into that pocket, but we're going to use the same piece of material. That way we're not uh, trying to use another piece of extra material that we, that I don't even have on hand. So we're going to need to make do with what we have. Then we have our bolt holes. So we're going to cut all the way through all of these parts so that we can thread our bolt through them. Then we have the spot for our nuts. Now, I, I believe I'm leaving this in here so you can see that this is the profile of the nut. And when we put it in the bottom, it'll actually lock itself in place and shouldn't twist around. Uh, I used the same sort of idea when we built um, the six foot tall Victor robot when we were putting the bolts into him. I used the same idea and it worked really quite well. So the next thing we need to think about is how are we going to cut this angle here? Well, we happen to have a 90 degree V-bit uh, in our stock of cutters. And so when I designed this, I designed this to be at a 45 degree angle. So I can use my 90 degree V-bit to cut this as long as I can run it along a profile line. So let's go ahead and take let's have a take a look take a look at that. Here are the two profile lines. There's there's actually there's two here. One, two, one, two, one, two, and one, two. Now, how did I decide where this next profile cut should go? So if I put some guidelines on here, you're going to see that I'm going to cut along here. So it's going to get, going to cut from here up to that line there. And the next time we're going to cut along that line here, we're going to end up clearing out this extra material. But how did I figure that out? Well, luckily, um, I happen to know the make of the tool that we're going to use, and it happens to be an a Armana tool. Um, it's an RC45711. And on their website, they give us this handy bit of information, which is the cut depth, which is 8.5 millimeters, which is this cut depth right here. So if we go ahead and minimize that, all I need to do is just know that 8.5 from here to there, where is that going to be? So if I go ahead and draw a simple line, doesn't matter, this just needs to be straight press escape, press T on our keyboard, and I can change this to be 8.5, just happened to be 8.5, I fluke that, let's close that down. So now what I can do is I can drag this up here and snap it on to the end point, and then I'm gonna know where it is I need to um, put my next vector where it intersects with this, this angle here, and that's it right there. That's where it's gonna intersect. And so those lines I can actually use to um, profile cut with a v-bit cutter and get that proper angle that I need. So let's get rid of these guidelines for a second. We don't need those anymore. Let's slide those out of the way. That's perfect. Let's have a look at the tooling that we have for this. Okay, let's go ahead and tile our views. That way we can get a good idea of what's happening here. So first of all, we're going to put our v-bit in and we're going to do those two v-bit profiles. So let's go ahead and preview the first one. So we're going to go ahead and cut that, those two lines there. And then if we go ahead and preview the second one, 
you'll see we're going to go and we're going to clean it up. There's a little bit of a step there. That's because when you noticed when I drew that line, it didn't quite line up perfectly. I'm not sure if that whether that was me or just how I measured things out or my snapping wasn't set up right. But there's a little bit of a line there. That's not going to matter whatsoever because we're going to actually we can either sand that out if we want to. But once we get the paper on there and everything, it's just going to hide anyway, and it's very very minimal. It's not a big deal at all. We're going to go ahead and look at our bolt holes. Yeah, we're going to preview that visible tool path. It's going to cut right through there. We have our nut pockets, so we can preview that visible tool path. That's that right there. Notice we don't cut all the way through the material. We're leaving a little bit on the other side there. So when we glue the, the top and the bottom together, we've got something for those that nut to grab a hold of. There's the six millimeter pocket, so let's preview those. It's going to cut that material down. So we have a we have a plug that's the right thickness that we want. It's going to fit perfectly inside of the pocket that we're cutting on the top part of our sanding block. And then we have a profile cut here. We'll preview that visible tool path. We have tabs in there. And then we're going to do our last profile cut. We'll preview those visible tool paths. And there's the parts that we need in order to go ahead and create this sanding wedge. It's a pretty easy job. There wasn't anything complicated there. The only big part was to make sure that we understand how I can use a V-bit along a open vector as a profile cut so that we can use or so we can create this thing in cut 2D. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, cut that on the machine. Okay, so to assemble this, what we're going to do is we're going to, I should have glued this together, we didn't, but we will though. But for right now, I just want to make sure it's going to work. So we're going to hold that there, and then we're going to fold this paper in like this. Then we're going to put the block down on top of it, and then line up our holes. And we should be able to just drop those in there, and screw them in, and drop this one in there, and do the same. And then we'll just twist these on. Hopefully that's pinched in there, okay. And there we have it. Sharp point. So now that we got that done, it's a nice new sanding block. We've got our wedges, our cam locks, and our squares, and also our um, hold downs from our last set of free projects. Let's go ahead and create something that we can put up on the wall of our shop. I've got a couple of pieces of this um, wood lying around, which I think would be make a really nice shop sign. And I had a little thought and I drew a bit of a picture. Now this picture has been drawn to scale of what I'd like the shop sign to be. And it fits exactly on top of the piece of wood. And the idea is that I can slot in behind this or inside of the sign, some of my tools that I have lying around my shop. And also, I wanna add a nice little feature, it could also be a coat hook. Now, the only way that I know of, or the easiest way that I know how to get, to get this into the software is to take a photo of it. But now I need to also make sure I can get it to the right scale. So to do that, in my photo, I'm going to go ahead and include a ruler so that I get a real world measurement in my photo and I can scale it up perfectly inside the software. So let me go ahead now and get a photo of this and then get it into the software. So here we are back in Cut 2D, and I've gone ahead and set up a job. Now this job is um, set up uh, about the size of the material that I have, and also the width of it has been shortened a bit um, because I know the real world size that I want my sign to be because I drew it at the right scale that I wanted it. So I know the actual width, and I've added a little bit to that, so I've got some extra space to work with. I'm going to use this first sheet as my design sheet. Um, so let's just go ahead now and drag in that image that I took. I've saved it off onto my desktop of my PC. So I'm dragging it in. I'm going to drop it down, and there we have it. Now again, as you saw me earlier, I've gone ahead and added in that ruler, and that was just going to be really important so I can size up this bitmap to be the right size it needs to be. Right now it's too small. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a box. Now 
a rectangle uh, about 300 millimeters wide because I can see that pretty clearly on my ruler. So I'm going to go over to 300 millimeters and I'm using the numbers that you see by my crosshair with x equals 300. The height doesn't matter at all. So I'm happy with that. We'll close that down. Now you'll see that when I imported in my bitmap on the layers, uh, in my layers manager, I have a bitmap layer that was set up. That's where my bitmap lives. So you can see I can turn that on and off. And I've got that rectangle and it's on layer one. It's going to be hard to see because it's black right now when I try to size up my bitmap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change that to a temporary orange color and that'll make it a little bit easier to see. I'm going to go ahead and select that bitmap. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down so that the start of the ruler starts right about at the start of that rectangle that I drew. I can use my cursor keys to nudge it into place. So something like that. And now I want to go ahead and size this up. Now, because this corner of my box doesn't line up with the corner of this image, as I drag it up, things are going to shuffle around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it up a bit see if I get close to 300. I'm pretty close. If I nudge that over a bit so it lines up with the ruler again, uh, it's actually not too bad. It needs to be just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to mess around with this a little bit until I get it as close as I need it to be. Now, I think that's pretty good. In hindsight, what I could have done is cropped this bitmap down right at the edge of this ruler. Um, and that way I could have just sized it up to be, you know, the number that's here, which would, would have made a lot more sense. But anyway, this is another option for you to try in the moment, in the heat of the moment, you just do whatever works for you at the time. So that's pretty decent. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that bitmap and I'm going to center it in my material again. So I'm just going to go ahead and center that right quickly. That looks really good. I don't need this uh, rectangle anymore, so I can delete that out of there. Let's close that down. Now, because of uh, the angle and also the lighting that, that I used when I took this uh, bitmap, when it's unselected, so if I try and draw any vectors on top of this, I'm not going to be able to see it. So I'm going to right click on that uh, with that bitmap selected. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go down to object properties. I'm going to turn off the fading. That way when it's selected now, it won't fade anymore. The only way I'm going to be able to tell that it's selected is the actual dotted line around the outside of that bitmap. But that's not going to matter because what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that bitmap layer. So by mistake, I won't select it and move it. So we're going to right click on that and we're going to lock that down. Now I can't select it and I can go ahead and start to draw some really basic vectors um, to create this thing. Now when I designed it, I kind of knew that I want to do this quite quickly. So really all I need to do is just go ahead and draw a few odds and ends here, a circle for the front of the spanner here. I close that and nudge it into place, a rectangle for the handle and so on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we can take a look at um, my next step that I need to do. So there we have it, all the vectors that we need to go ahead and create the front and back of this project. Now, the way I've designed this is to actually be um, not a double-sided job. It's going to be two single-sided jobs that we're going to glue together. Now, I've been a little sneaky here, and I've gone ahead and created all the other stuff that we need to have for this project. So if we go over to our sheets here, you'll see that I've got a, a bottom and a top. And then this special sheet right here that's going to come in super handy when you mount it on the wall. Um, it's actually a template so you can get your screw holes in the right spot. So it'll hang at, hang at exactly the right angle. So let's go ahead and quickly have a look at the front of this. And you'll see that using these vectors, I actually went ahead and created um, the jaw, the handle, the plus that vector you just saw was for the profile cut, an extra little pocketing area, and then I added in some text. So let's go ahead and take a look at my tool paths for this. So we have the handle pocket, we have a, a hole pocket, that's for this hole at the end here. We've got the text area here, which we're going to look at in detail in a second, and then we've got the cutout. So let's just go ahead and have a look at the text area that we have here. So this is a basic pocket toolpath. Remember, it's cut 2D. So we've gone ahead and used whatever font I wanted to. It didn't matter what it was. I just kind of plunked in a font. I'm going to create a pocket around this. So between the text and this edge here, we're going to create a pocket. But the special little thing that I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to use a V-bit in my tool set that I'm going to use to clear out this pocket with. So that will allow me to get into some of these areas and give me some nice sharp points. Now, 
If you have vCurve Pro or a vCurve Desktop or Aspire, you would, you would use your vCurve Toolpath for this, and it would give you a much better result. But this will give us something pretty close, and I'll show you that right now. So if we close this down and we preview those toolpaths, let's start off by previewing our handle pocket. It's pretty easy and looks pretty nice. Let's go ahead and preview that hole. I'm going to preview the hole in the handle. That's good. Now let's have a look at this V-bit text here. So I've gone ahead and reordered this. So my V-bit is going to cut first in that pocket toolpath. And you'll see that obviously because it's a pocket toolpath, it's not going to go ahead and get into all these extra areas that I have here. Just it's the nature of the of the toolpath. And um, if it was a V-Curve toolpath, again, from V-Curve Pro Desktop or Aspire, it would clean all those areas out really quite nicely. And then I have the clearance tool, which is that 1 8 inch end mill. If I preview that toolpath, it's going to go in and clean that all up. And that's pretty nice for Cut 2D for raised text. I will need to go in and just use a... Uh, uh, a carpet knife or a Stanley knife or a pocket knife and remove some of these little bits that are left over. But overall, that's pretty darn good. So let's go ahead and just run our cutout toolpath. We'll preview that. We've got some tabs in there to hold it in place. And that essentially is the front of our sign. Let's go back to our 2D view for a second and we're going to pop over to the bottom side of this or our bottom sheet. Go back to our 3D view for a second. We have three very simple toolpaths here. Now I'm just going to go ahead and tile this up and down. So the first thing we're going to do is I've gone ahead and added in the mounting holes. They're angled at exa exactly the same angle as these uh, the channels are for my tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut or pocket out down just a little bit these areas here, and then I'm going to cut all the way through these areas here. So that way, when um, we go ahead and put the head of the screw from the back side through, it will fetch up on the lip right here. So if we go ahead and we preview these tool paths really quickly. You'll see that there's that first hole. It doesn't go all the way through. But when I go ahead and preview this last tool, and I guess I included that in my cutout pass. So hide that for a second. Preview that. You'll see that I cut all the way through. I've got these little bits of waste material. But when I go ahead and glue the front of my spanner to the front of this, then I've got that teeny lip there that's going to catch on the screws. Now, the last thing I didn't show you was the actual the channels for our tools. And there they are. They're just going to cut in there nicely. And there we have it. And that's pretty much it. Once we cut those, glue the two together, we're going to have our sign pretty much done. Now let's have a quick look at this template right here. Now how can we go ahead and use this and print it out at actual size? Well, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go up to File, and we are going to export this as a PDF. Okay, So what it's going to do is it's going to export the wall template sheet as a PDF, and then when I go ahead and open that PDF, PDF up in my Adobe Acrobat or whatever you use to cut or to print out your PDFs with, just make sure that you say print at actual size. And when you print this out, this will be exactly what you need to tape on the wall to drill your holes into. And you can go ahead and mount your sign on your wall exactly where you want it to be. Now let's not forget, you don't need to use my text here if you want to. You can change that to be whatever you want it to be, but I'm gonna leave it as it is. So let's go ahead now and see how this cuts out. Okay, so I've gone ahead now and put down my material on the CNC using the cams and the wedges, and it seems pretty secure, but don't forget that you're going to want to use the proper hold downs for your job. So choose the ones that are going to work the best for you. In this case, I'm going to give this a go and see how it works. So I guess we're just going to go ahead now and start running some tool paths for the front of our shop sign.
Well, I had a lot of fun making those. These are going to be great additions to the Vectric Labs, and I'm sure we're going to use them daily here when we make things or more projects for you guys. Uh, some of the things I would do differently is I probably would have used a compression cutter to cut these pieces of plywood. As you can see, they look a pretty bit, a little bit ratty on the back. Um, but I kind of, I don't mind that so much because I know they're going to get used and abused, so they don't need to be finished perfect. If I was going to remake this sander, I certainly would use hardwood. One of the nuts did spin in the bottom because it hit a piece of softer layer in the plywood, so that wasn't great, so a hardwood would fix that. I love the shop sign. I didn't put a finish on it, so you guys can finish it as you like, and of course if you make it, I want to see it. Um, Right now, this is available for you to download in your VNCO account, so please go ahead and download that. And again, like I said, if you make it, make sure we see it. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments, please leave them below. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then please do. And uh, until next time, happy making, and uh, I can't wait to see what you do with these.